to a new horizon in uh, CMR. It should have been presented by uh, Professor uh, Dr. Wissam al uh, uh, He apologizes uh, that he cannot uh, attend. So Dr. Adina Haroun uh, will be our uh, great presenter. She is a lecturer of radio diagnosis at uh, Cairo University and one of the eminent uh, uh, imaging team uh, in the um, uh, institution of uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Magdi Aoub uh, is a big institution serving uh, the upper Egypt uh, cardiac patients and even more and more. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks to Dr. Rahid for the great introduction. Thank you. Okay, we are going uh, to talk about the 4D flow, a new horizon in the CMR. Okay, uh, knowledge have no value until it being processed and practiced, and that's what we go through from the 2D flow to the 4D flow, and that's what we're going to discuss right right now. Those are the outlines of the lecture. Overview of the flow mapping, the phase contrast MRI, which is called the 2D flow. What's the 4D flow? How we perform it? Uh, the, the 4D CMR post-processing and the clinical applications. The overview of the 2D flow. Um, the first in vivo uh, flow mapping were reported in uh, 1980. Uh, currently, the 2D flow is an integral part of the protocols in assessing blood flow in day-to-day -day practice. It means that every case of uh, cardiac MRI we are going to acquire, we have to take the 2D flows. Uh, here. It's not working. This is the magnitude and the phase contrast images of the flow. Uh, it's supposed to be in the video. Uh, we are going to see technically, technically why it's not working. Okay, no. Okay, we are going to manage. Those are the magnitude images and the phase contrast images of the uh, 2D flow, which is an integral part in our cardiac MRI. Uh, it's supposed to be contracting to see the direction of flow. The, these dark spots inside the, the aorta is the direction of flow of the blood through the aortic valve. This is the magnitude imaging to see the anatomy in details, and this is the phase contrast images. Uh, and this is how we post-process the data of the t 2D flow. We are going to do segmentation on the um, phase contrast images and acquire a flow across the time uh, to interpret the amount of flow, the direction of flow, and velocity across the time. Those are the, t two, uh, the 2D flow. The other side of the coin, the limitation of the 2D flow. Uh, it's measured the flow in encoding in one direction only in each scan. Uh, and it is operator dependent. Also um, liable to artifacts from uh, if the patient have arrhythmias or something like that. So it has limitation that it's uh, in one direction only across the time, then it's 2D. And it's operator dependent. Uh, another limitation of the 2D flow is that it cannot measure the flow across the mitral and tricuspid valves, uh, um, and generally the AV valves. It can measure only the flow across the, the tubular uh, structure like the aorta and the pulmonary. So we cannot use it uh, to measure the flow across the mitral and tricuspid valves. So here arises the need for another sequences to overcome these limitations. Here uh, we uh, found the need for the 4D flow. The 4D flow, uh, the, the, 
method of acquisition is through uh, uh, acquiring volumetric coverage like we see here, volumetric coverage across the heart in 3D volume. And it's respiratory gated. The fourth dimension is the time. It, the raw data is the X, Y, Z direction. And across the time, those are the four directions. And it's a volume coverage from the heart uh, from head to feet. And it's, of course, ECG gated. Uh, as we previously talked in the TD flow, 2D flow, the 4D flow had magnitude images. And instead of having one direction, it has three directions. This is the magnitude image here and the aorta here. And those are the three vectors or three uh, directions, the x direction, the y direction, the z direction. Across the time, those are the four directions. They are li right, left, anteroposterior, feet, head. But those are raw data, unreadable data. So we have the need to have post-processing to get the quantitative uh, data from those images. OK, how we do the post-processing? Uh, time bring colors to the black and white images. So we have two types of lines, the streamlines and the vector velocity. Uh, those are the streamlines. They present imaginary line according to the blood velocity in the given cardiac phase. This means that each, each line from those lines, oh, the video is working, the good news. <laughs> each, each line from these lines has its velocity, OK? Those are the streamlines, different velocity of the flow according ac across the cardiac cycle in a given chamber. OK, what is the ve velocity vector field? Those are uh, representing the velocity with the direction of the, of the uh, flow. So the streamline are concerned with the uh, velocity. And we can see here, like, the red is slower than the, y the yellow, for example. We're going to discuss those lines in details after which. But the uh, vector field velocity, the lines are uh, according to their direction as well. And this is important to detect the uh, vortices of the blood flow. Like this, these lines are directed upward, they're directed downward, and with their velocity as well. OK, how we do the quantitative analysis of the 4D flow? Uh, it's opposite to the Carpenter's law. What, what the meaning of the Carpenter's law? The Carpenter measured twice and cut once. In the cases of 4D flow, we measured or cut once and measured twice, three times, uh, and up to 100 times. This is the major difference between the 2D flow and the 4D flow. OK, here. We acquired the 3D volume as we demonstrated before and uh, do the quantification. Like here, this is a case of extra cardiac fontaine. We are going to do the 4D flow across here and, and the IVC and the LPA, RPA, and get the, the full data coverage in, in the form of 4D uh, quantification through the, the single acquisition we have across the 3D volume we've taken before. And this is the flow. You like here? Yeah, that's nice. OK. <laughs> this is the flow, the inflow, outflow. This is the three chamber view, left atrium, left ventricle, and the aorta. And we are uh, managing to measure the flow of the inflow, which is across the mitral valve, and the outflow across the aortic valve simultaneously at the same uh, cardiac cycle. And this is another difference between the 2D, fli 2D flow and the 4D flow. OK. Those are the flow images and how we do post-processing. Those are the SENI images we use. Uh, this is the interpretation by the graphi graphical representation of the flow across the mitral valve and across the aorta. This is very similar to the image of the, the, the graphical representation of the 2D flow. This is the inflow 
this is the outflow. Uh, the theory of 4D flow is visually appealing, uh, car colorful imaging, and we can get, go through it to get the hemodynamic parameters. But, and there is always but in the, in the, uh, in the field of medicine to go through further uh, um, achievements. It has long scan time and difficult post-processing uh, and special post-processing uh, work, work, uh, workstations. This is about the, what about the secondary vascular parameters? Okay, we have measured, already measured the, uh, the flow. Um, the privilege of the 4D flow is also assess some uh, functional vessel parameters. The pathway velocity and the wall shear stress. Uh, this is not present in the TD f 2D flow. Uh, the pulse wave velocity, it, it's that uh, represented in the curve, but the upstream and downstream. Uh, uh, in the 4D flow, it is an indicator for this is stiffness and distensibility. Uh, this is an additional parameter. The wall shear stress, the wall shear stress is uh, the force on a per uh, per unit area parallel, uh, parallel to the wall, and it's an in indicator of the vessel remodeling like uh, in cases of aortic stenosis, coarctation, and cases of aneurysms, the wall shear stress and remodeling is an important uh, indicator uh, and prognostic value, and it's only measured by the 4D flow. Okay, what's the clinical application? The 4D flow was first um, uh, presented at work uh, in early 90s. Uh, the CMR I undergone development over the last decade and capabilities of evaluating cardiac structure, function, and flow. Uh, what about the hemodynamics? Here, uh, when we are going to discuss the aorta and the related pathology, valve-related disease. This is image of the, awor the normal aorta, and these are the streamlines here. This is the normal patient, the normal control. This is a patient with stenotic uh, tricuspid aortic valve and dilated uh, aorta. There are the streamline and the vortices, streamline and vector lines in these images. And this is the cross section of the same um, photo here, uh, the cup by here. This is bicuspid aortic valve with, aortic, with dilated aorta. And this is the streamline, the vector lines, and the, cu uh, the cut through this line. This is a clinical application of the valve related disease in the aorta. It, to give a uh, detailed evaluation of the aortic flow, in eccentric jets, as we said in the cases of stenosis, have ha high shear stress. Elevated stre shear stress uh, is found to be present at the site of the aneurysm. Um, a clinical impact that uh, beta blockers be reduce the, the systolic impulse and aerial intervention high risk group. When we find that we have, uh, by application of the 4D flow, that this point have high shear stress, we can give beta blocker to reduce the remodeling. Or uh, if we know that this is happening in the point of aortic aneurysm, we can monitor early the, um, those patients before they develop uh, aneurysms or at the point of high shear stress. Yeah. It's like um, feedback mechanism. We know uh, what is the effect of the disease and monitor by measuring the quantitative data from the 4D flow and use it interchangeably for clinical, for better clinical assessment. Dina, can we go to conclusion, please, Dina? Okay, <laughs> the aortic aneurysm. Uh, this is the last image to measure the um, um, application of the cardiomyopathy. Those four lines here interpreted in the point chart, uh, that there is something that the, the, um, uh, the retained flow, the residual flow, the delayed ejected flow, and the direct flow. This is the, the part of the code, the residual flow. It's highest in the cardiomyopathy patients. Uh, in the Fontaine circulation, we'll find that the right, um, the flow directed in the Fontaine was going to the RPA. Uh, the summary here that we have, uh, the we get more clinical data from the, D, the 4D flow and know the uh, uh, alt alteration in the flow to produce the blood vessel abnormality. We still need to have um, uh, more research to get uh, fast post processing and fast acquisition and the validation by the med medical legal engineering team when you uh, rest stratification, it's a personalized medicine. Each patient or each individual has it, its own pattern of the 4D flow. Beautiful, but still long way ago. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we postpone the question for to the end. We run short of uh, time. Uh, 
Now we have uh, from uh, Al-Mansura Medical School, 